For now, the surprise is bigger. Though, it's not like I'm shocked. I just never imagined such a young girl would come. But isn't that way too young? While the phrase large age gap dating came into my mind, those two exchanged a few light words and started walking towards the station. I was relieved that they didn't go towards the close by entertainment district. Let's go. I sank down my cap, grabbed the seemingly unenthusiastic Anzu by the arm, and left the shop. We lowered our eyes. We passed the gates, and in the first platform, we saw them immediately. To avoid detection, we sneaked behind their backs and distanced ourselves. We decided that after we board the train, we would move to the car next to them. No, not in the same car as them. What are you, a child? I'm not a child. Then what are you? But Anzu, more importantly, did you hear anything? No, all I heard was mumbling. I ignored the Anzu, who doesn't seem to be able to do anything else than messing with me, and thought about how on earth would have that girl met my dull dad. Realistically speaking, I thought the line of age gap dating was improbable. If that was the case, the girl would be reluctant to travel unnecessarily. And in such broad daylight, maybe it's a serious relationship. But then again, how on earth did they meet? It surely can't be one of those fated encounters from shoujo manga i've met the people from his workplace several times but there wasn't anyone so young maybe he put his hands on a new employee that would be the worst while thinking such things the train came and after confirming they got on we got on too we moved several cars inside the train until we saw the figures of the two seated side by side while looking happily into each other's faces on the next car over. We were lucky that the joint between cars had windows. We got seated where we could clearly see those two happy faces. They're all lovey-dovey. We still can't assume anything. Fuyu, you're the one who started this whole affair thing. I couldn't say anything back to her. And then she made an exaggerated sigh. In the first place, why did you get yeller in a fight? She pinched my cheek. I'll eat that finger. Without turning her way, I recalled the fight from a few days ago. It all started from a small thing, a tiny thing. I was watching a movie that was by chance airing on TV that day. And by chance, dad came home earlier than usual. While I was watching the movie on the living room sofa, Dad started eating dinner on the table behind. And because I'm tired of such average and boring days, I said vaguely while I watched the movie and played with my phone, a long life without anything happening sure is boring. The movie was, by chance, of that theme. I didn't really expect a response but dad spoke out. That is not true. 
Maybe even that was by chance. His tone was something close to one of a sermon, which made some sensor in my brain react, and I retorted. It is boring to live around 60 years or more without anything changing. That's hopeless. I shouldn't have said anything beyond that. There's people who would say that. However, the one at fault here is my dad. He's the one who broke the bosom of this family. There was an extension to the phrase, so I just said it. Rather than continuing to live such a boring life until the end, I'd rather die a dramatic death. For you, me. My name was called, so I looked back. Dad was looking at me with a clearly going to lecture you expression. Seeing that face, no matter what is said, like probably every high schooler in the world, I was irritated. That it would be better to die shouldn't be said. Are you saying such boring things like that because there's people in the world who wanted to live more? Yes, I am. As expected of the boring father of the boring me. From there on, a complete mud slinging began and there's no need to recall further. It eventually became a bother, so I went to my room. I heard a knocking sound from behind, but I ignored it. If I tell all this to Anzu, she will probably start picking apart everything, so I explained it to her shortly. About the meaning of life, huh? Even though I explained with my best smug face so she didn't pick me apart, she responded with a surpassing, huh? Whenever the topic becomes serious, Anzu always seems to be sinking. Figuratively, of course. It's not like she really sinks. For a while, the sounds of the moving train enveloped us. Eventually, we reached a certain station in which Dad got up first. Apparently, he's today's host. It doesn't really matter, but I wonder what kind of dates did he plan when he was dating mom? I guess they must have been boring. I urged Anzu, who was reading a book, and we got off the train too. Luckily, they didn't turn back. Anzu stretched behind me. We came pretty far, huh? Yeah, I never got off here. There were people on the platform and the station surroundings could hardly be said to be cheerful. Not absolutely so, but it really wasn't a place suitable for dates. An ideal place to rent a place around that girl. Anzu blurted out an unpleasant thing again as if reading my mind. If that is really the case, I'll threaten him into giving me all the money of the rent as allowance. I won't give Anzu any. We followed them, putting the necessary distance between us and past the gates where there was then a roundabout in front of the station. As if they sensed my concern of them taking a bus or taxi, they ignored those transportation methods and went straight up the slope, just behind the roundabout. It wasn't only them, other people were taking the same route from the station. Ahead of the slope, nothing other than an average hill could be seen. I dragged along Anzu, who was saying unreasonable things like, eh, I don't want to do the exercise. 
as we went up behind them. Don't do it. I'll die if we do exercise in such temperature. You won't die. Just looking at you, things like genetic inheritance become nonsense. I'll die if you don't treat me to the most expensive parfait. Whoa, such expensive maintenance. I had quite a difficult time dragging this girl who's noisy and acting an unwilling expression. However, I was pretty uneasy and I am also a noisy girl. That's probably how we've managed to remain friends all this time. Just like that, fawning at each other, we went up the slope and I immediately started sweating. I shared a bottle of water from a vending machine with Anzu and we climbed again. When an elderly couple filled with energy overtook us, a weird laughter welled up in our throats. I wonder where they're headed going through this trouble. I learned the answer fairly immediately. Ahead the hill, there was an extensive stone staircase. There was a parking and a big sign for cars. Ansel, this is a graveyard. Oh, well, a graveyard? Ah, a graveyard. While the heat robbed us of brain capacity, we continued climbing while vacantly looking at the two's backs. I started hearing childish things to my side like carry me or piggyback me, but I ignored it. After we pinned down my dad and invite her to a parfait, even that child should go back to normal. When we finally reached the end of the staircase, a gentle slope spread ahead and maybe because of the adrenaline, a new theory came to my mind. Maybe it's a secret child. I don't care anymore. There was a vending machine in the perfect place, as if targeting people tired from the climb. I bought a juice to the exhaust Ansel. I would feel guilty if she really died in a graveyard. Though, compared to the hill and staircase from before, this was much easier. There were graves all around, and while admiring the weird shape of some, we followed those too. Without notice, the floor became stoned. They still didn't seem to be stopping at a grave. It was almost Oban, so I thought whether that would be related. Honestly, I had started to notice. Maybe his friend died recently and he's going to the grave with this person's daughter. I froze. That would be a boring conclusion for the boring us and I don't want that. Going ahead, as if the unnecessary things were shaved off, the surroundings became silent. The sound of our own footsteps reached our ears. The wind blew. When we reached a water drawer, they went up some stairs. When their figure disappeared, we also went up carefully. Maybe the wind was on our side because their conversation flowed into our ears. Have you ever told your daughter? I don't think she noticed us, but it shocked me. No, I thought that in good timing, but in the end I still couldn't tell her. Hearing that voice, packed with dad's pain, a cold sweat crossed my forehead. Is that so? Well, this may be impudent of me, but if I were the daughter, I think I would like to know about the irreplaceable person in dad's life. Hearing that, 
I think I could have ran up the stairs and shouted, so it was something guilty after all. The reason I didn't do that wasn't the fatigue. I just wanted to hear Dad's response. However, the wind, as if it liked doing pranks, turned the other way. I subconsciously looked at Anzu. She said the obvious thing. Why don't you go and ask? But, well, I'll go with you. It's fine. My precious friend pushed my back and I made up my mind. I would go up a few steps and address them in a strict tone, but it didn't go well. I made eye contact with dad who, for some unknown reason, came back. We both were surprised and as a true parent and child, we said in the same tone, at the same time, wah. It resounded in the graveyard. Fuyumi, why?